It's the airplane designed to rule the skies in the 21st century. The F-22 Raptor. With unprecedented stealth, speed, and maneuverability, this plane will be unbeatable in a dogfight. And in fact, it's so advanced, it will make dogfighting obsolete. It's been 15 years in development, a program filled with exhilarating success and disturbing failure. Now we'll unlock closed doors for an in-depth look at the future of fighter aviation. And we'll take a breathtaking ride with an F-22 test pilot. F-22 number 001, the first development model ever built. The goal for this new airplane is clear, and the expectations are enormous. The F-22 Raptor must be the best fighter in the world. At Edwards Air Force Base, California, a fortress of secrecy surrounds the premier test flights of this 21st century warplane. Our cameras have been cleared for access, escorted at every turn. An elite group of America's finest test pilots have gathered here to take this revolutionary new plane into the unknown, one step at a time. Lieutenant Colonel Steve Rainey is the first Air Force test pilot to fly this remarkable fighting machine. In the past, combat commanders looked to establish air superiority. With the F-22, air superiority isn't good enough. On future battlefields, the Raptor must exert total air dominance. The airplane is incredibly capable. It is uh, absolutely revolutionary in its capabilities. And I think that that's the key difference. Air dominance is air superiority, but is on a much grander scale with much greater capability. That capability is sometimes called first look, first shot, first kill by the Air Force. In essence, any potential enemy can be shot down before they even know they've been spotted. The F-22 is the first plane in the history of winged combat capable of achieving such an overwhelming advantage. Test cards are the script for the upcoming mission. They list the maneuvers and goals for the next flight. Steve's test flight is scheduled for 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. The test team is working towards four major objectives for the F-22. They want the plane to be stealthy, virtually undetectable to the enemy. It must supercruise, fly for extended periods at supersonic speeds without afterburner. They expect the F-22 to be the most maneuverable fighter in the sky. The pilots should have no limits on their high angle of attack or angle of flight. And they're hoping the avionics will be so advanced that the pilots will be able to devote their full attention to the business of fighting the enemy. The F-22 will be far more than an improved version of today's fighters. If you look down through history and you look at a comparison between, say, the top fighter in World War II, the P-51, and 25 years later with the advent of the jet age, the F-4, to me, that's a revolutionary jump. We've jumped from propellers to jet engines. We've jumped from manual bombing and manual gun sites to some computed capabilities in the F-4. Other airplanes like the F-15, the F-16, in my mind, have been evolutionary. I believe we've taken that next revolutionary step with the F-22. The F-22 program will cost over $70 billion. Giants of the aviation industry have joined forces to develop the airplane. Lockheed Martin and Boeing are building the airframe. Pratt & Whitney is building new engines. Pre-flight briefings must include representatives from these companies as well as Air Force personnel. 
Aeronautical engineer Mary Beth O'Loughlin is the test conductor, the head of the team. She leads the testing for the F-22. Mary Beth's got to manage 30 to 40 highly specialized engineers, each of whom is busy testing and monitoring his own set of in-flight data, and relayed all of this information back to the pilot in simple, straightforward language at critical moments during the flight. With a new airplane, every maneuver, no matter how simple, enters uncharted territory. We are obviously trying to go up higher and faster with the airplane. And we take baby steps towards that, um, just flying lower and slower until we get good data and the engineers have a chance to analyze that data and make sure it agrees with their predictions. Then we can go ahead and continue up higher and faster. What we've got is a race car that's still in the parking lot because of the restrictions on the flight envelope. We're still driving around parking it and doing little donuts in the parking lot. We haven't gotten it out on the racetrack yet to really let it out. And eventually we maneuver the airplane to higher G loads, which is what we'll be doing uh, in the coming months. We'll be going to supersonic speeds with the airplane, demonstrating the super cruise capability and starting to slow it down to the higher angles of attack and the dogfighting of regime. Right now we're in the phase with the F-22 that's very high visibility. Everybody's very worried. All of the terrifying things that have happened to me in the past have come in the part of the program where everything's business as usual. Business as usual is the most terrifying part of the program because people then back down. I have never been terrified or frightened on a high-risk test. I've had this holy the Jesus scared out of me during uh, low-risk tests. And the reason is everyone's relaxed. After more than two hours in the team briefing, the pilots and mission control reconvene for more last-minute planning. No detail can be overlooked. Surprises can be deadly. Tomorrow's mission will focus on testing the handling qualities of the Raptor. If, if you're upwind, then the crosswind kind of helps you when you make the correction. So my thought is, if I've got a slight right crosswind, then I'll be on the left side, so I have to fight the crosswind coming back. The F-22 is revolutionary in its design. There are no apparent fuel tanks or weapons. They are carried internally. The surfaces of missiles are highly reflective and storing them inside the F-22 helps hide the plane from enemy radar. In the main weapons bay, we can carry six AIM-120 radar missiles. And in the side weapons bay, there's one on each side, we can carry one AIM-9 missile. So we have a complement of eight missiles and an internal 20 millimeter Gatling gun, similar to other fighters. Once the aircraft is targeted and the pilot selects a missile and launches the missile, then very rapidly the door for the side that the, the, the missile is selected will rapidly open up, the missile will be ejected, and the door will close. To further reduce the Raptor's radar signature, making it more stealthy, the lines of the F-22 are angular. This shape deflects radar signals, making the aircraft radar resistant. Stealth is somewhat like the Klingon cloaking device from the, from the Star Trek series. It doesn't really make you invisible, but it's so close to invisibility that if you can imagine a large airplane like a 747, relatively speaking, an airplane like the F-22 is somewhere between the size of a bumblebee and a small bird in its relative size to that 747 airline. If you pile up all of the breakthroughs that are incorporated in the F-22, stealth leads the list. Stealth's a great equalizer. It's the sneak up behind the guys and shoot them before they know you're there. It makes war really terrifying. The end result of that is going to be it's not going to be fair, and we don't want it to be fair. It's now 15 hours before flight time. Will the F-22 measure up, or will it throw a curve at the man in the cockpit, causing him to face a $70 billion disaster? Thank you.
No matter how efficient the aerodynamics, or how advanced the avionics, there's no substitute for raw power. The F-22 packs two Pratt & Whitney F-119s, engines designed specifically for the Raptor. It had to be affordable, lightweight, thrust was important. It's a powerful engine for the airplane. Uh, that's, that's the key here. Uh, the engine, it's, it's been stated and written, is a 35,000 pound class engine. Uh, it has a lot of thrust. The big key is supercruise or the ability to fly supersonically without the use of afterburners.